The aim of these films is to provide an update for the skill of indwelling urinary catheterisation. There are three films in these series. The first one is about what you need to think about before you insert the catheter. The second one is about the procedure. And the third one is what you need to do after the catheterisation. The expectation is that a full day's catheter training and competency has been completed previously. As this is a refresher of the skill, we are expecting that you understand the relevant anatomy and physiology. We will not be covering this in detail. The Trust advises that indwelling urinary catheters are only inserted after other methods of management have been considered. Long-term catheterisation should be considered a last resort in the treatment of bladder dysfunction. Some of the indications for catheterisation are as follows. To relieve acute or chronic urinary retention, preoperatively or for postoperative drainage, to measure accurate urine output, to determine a post void residual volume, to enable the bladder function test to be, to, to be performed or as a last resort for unmanageable urinary incontinence. Before you start, ensure that you are familiar with the Gloucestershire Health and Care Urinary Catheterisation Policy. There are a number of action cards at the back of the policy to support with insertion, changing and removal of catheters, as well as guidance on drainage systems, incrustation, specimens and bladder scanning. It's vital that you work within your level of competence at all times. When considering alternative methods of management, remember intermittent catheterisation. Studies suggest that clean, intermittent catheterisation is the safest method of emptying the bladder, so it may be more appropriate than an indwelling catheter. The benefits of intermittent catheterisation include promoting greater independence, reducing urinary tract infections, maintains urethral closure, allows more normal bladder function, freedom for sexuality and positive body image, but for intermittent self-catheterisation to be successful, individuals need to have sufficient dexterity, they need to be motivated and have capacity. These considerations will form part of your assessment. A full patient assessment must be completed prior to considering catheterisation. A balanced decision should be made considering the benefits and risks of the procedure. There are a number of associated risks with catheterisation and they include pain or discomfort of the procedure, injury to the urethra or prostate, urethral stricture caused by trauma or repeated or long-term catheterisation, injury to the bladder, bleeding, urinary tract infections, bladder spasm or bladder stones from long-term indwelling catheter placement. There are certain times when advice should be sought before catheterisation. These include recent urological surgery, so that's within the last month, trauma to the abdomen, pelvis or urethra, carcinoma of the urinary tract, haematuria, abnormal urethral discharge, previous difficulties with catheterisation, congenital abnormalities of the penis and urethra, or acute retention. There are further guidance on acute retention within the catheterisation policy. If the patient has been assessed as needing an indwelling catheter, informed consent needs to be obtained. The individual should be informed of the reason for the procedure, its associated risks and benefits, and a decision must include other options such as alternative methods of bladder management. The person's details should be checked and don't forget to check for allergies including whether a patient is allergic to latex. Only catheters made from polyvinyl chloride and 100% silicone are free from latex. So there's certain equipment that you will need. You'll need a dressing trolley or a clean area if you're in the patient's own home. You'll need Clonel wipes to clean that area, covering for the bed, a catheter pack. And if you are using anaesthetic lubricant gel, it must be prescribed or administered from the appropriate medication protocol. The patient should be socially clean before the pre pre procedure is commenced. The patient should be offered a chaperone and dignity must be maintained at all times. Discuss with the patient that they will need to lie on their back with their knees bent and hip flexed with their feet about 60 centimetres apart. Make sure you've got some kind of protection on the bed. There are a number of circumstances when the procedure should be abandoned. 
if the catheter no will not pass with gentle pressure, if bleeding occurs, or if the procedure is unusually painful. Only have two attempts at the procedure. After this, seek advice. This section is now complete, so you're ready to go on to the next film, the insertion of a catheter. So for this video, we are going to look at female catheterization. Um, as before, we're going to explain the procedure to the patient. Um, we're going to obtain their informed consent. Obviously be aware that if you are a male doing a female catheterization, you've got to make sure that the patient is happy for that to carry on. Okay, having a chaperone is a good idea as well. Okay, so once I've obtained her informed consent, I'm going to uh, assist her to get undressed and comfortable on the bed. Uh, I'm then going to wash my hands for the designated 30 seconds before cleaning the surface of my uh, dressing trolley. And allowing that to air dry. Uh, in relation to my catheter pack, I want to ensure that I've got the correct size. And remember for females, uh, the sizes are generally between 12 and 14. Um, obviously for males it's 14 to 16. Um, also check the expiry date and also ensure that this is a standard length. So despite the fact this is a female catheterization, we're still looking to have a, a, a standard length catheter, which is a male size catheter. Also remember you have your stickies at the back which tells you the size, also the reference and the lot number and the expiry date for documentation afterwards. You're then going to put your catheter pack onto the surface. Also be aware that um, these catheter packs do come with sterile gloves. Uh, they tend to be on the smaller size. So um, if you have got larger hands, make sure that you've got um, appropriate size gloves that you can add on. I'm going to uncover the patient okay, and just lift the heels up. An alternative position for a lady, particularly if they're obese, is to lie on their side, um, but you will need assistance with the insertion for this. I'm now going to get a towel out of the pack just to put underneath the patient, and then I'm going to clean my hands the appropriate period of time before donning my first pair of sterile gloves. Okay, so inside the catheter pack you've got your sterile gloves, you have a sterile towel just prior to uh, inserting the catheter, you have your gauze, you have an empty syringe to deflate the balloon for the existing catheter if one's in situ, you've got two um, syringes of sterile water for cleaning purposes. You have a 10 ml syringe of sterile water to inflate the new balloon and you have your lubricant as well. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get your gauze. If you keep one of the gauze separate and that will allow you to um, part the labia so you can insert the catheter. You're going to put the sterile water on the remaining gauze and if you put this in place because remember you are doing an aseptic non-touch technique okay and you want to do clean around the area from top to bottom one sweep and then away and then repeat at that point you would instill the lubricant just into the urethra Just warn the patient that this might be cold and a little bit uncomfortable. 
just as it goes in. Okay, at that point, you would then remove your gloves and wash up for a further 30 seconds. It's worth noting that if you are using an anaesthetic lubricant, that that needs to stay in situ for about three to five minutes to allow it to start working. So I've now washed my hands and done my second pair of sterile gloves. I'm now going to get the um, sterile towel and this will allow me to maintain a sterile field and a bit of gauze again to separate the labia. Within your uh, catheter pack also you'll see that we have the catheter itself and as I say it's a standard length catheter and you'll see that the catheter bag is attached. When this red tag is on there then um, this bag does need changing for two weeks you can put the date on the bag itself. If the tag isn't on there then this needs to be changed on a weekly basis. So this is an aseptic non-touch technique so I've perforated, I've torn down the perforations. I'm now going to separate the labia and insert the catheter into the urethra. When you start seeing uh, some urine coming out of the catheter, then just proceed a further two centimeters and then you can inflate the balloon. If you do find that there is resistance there, then just proceed a little bit further just to make sure that you're into the bladder and then you can inflate it. Make sure that you use all 10 mils of the sterile water to inflate the balloon and then gently pull it back until there's resistance and that's the catheter in place. You can then just get one of your gauze that's remaining just to clean around the area. And that procedure is finished. You've also got a fixation device that can fix this to the patient's leg. You'll see that the device, you have some skin preparation that you should use on the skin prior to attaching the, the fixation device with the adhesive. Fix the device on the top of the leg. If you do it on the inner thigh, then it will obviously cause chaffing and some irritation to the patient when they're mobilizing. All you need to do is Gently attach it to the leg. And close it. You also have some ties within your catheter pack. And these need to be fixed uh, through the holes. Remember with the top one, it needs to go behind the tube because you don't want to occlude any of the urine coming out from the catheter into the bag. So fix that underneath there and then you can fix it onto the patient's leg and then fix the bottom one as well and that's the procedure all done. So the catheter is now in place, we're just going to talk about what you need to do following the procedure. You need to make sure that you document all the care given and all patients when they're discharged from hospital must be referred to their community nursing service and given a catheter passport. The documentation that you complete needs to include informed consent, 
any allergies were identified, the reason for catheterisation, so whether it was a catheter change or the ongoing need for the catheter, the procedure details, so that you used a septic non-touch technique, something about the insertion, was it an easy or a difficult insertion, were there any abnormalities seen, the product details, so most catheter packs come with a sticker which contains the material, the size, the lot number, expiry date and balloon size, so just make sure you document all of that. Record the amount and the colour of urine drained, your choice and use of devices, for example a standard bag or a urometer, and any follow-up arrangements that you've made including date of the next change. Don't forget to date, time, signature or your electronic record will do this. So the catheter passport is a patient held document that can be useful for the patient and the clinician looking after the catheter. So there's information in there for the patient on catheter care and tips on living with a catheter. There's information on prevent prevention of infection including hand hygiene and the importance of keeping hydrated. There's a place there where you can record the dates where the catheter is inserted and as the document stays with the patient, hopefully that will move around um, services with the patient. There's, you're able to record urinary tract infections and catheter supplies in there. There's information on troubleshooting and how to seek help. Do remember that urinary catheters are a common source of infection. We shouldn't underestimate the risk of these invasive devices and how infections can easily escalate and patients deteriorate. Clinical observation should be undertaken as per your local policy. You have now completed the catheter update. Ensure you work within your level of competence at all times and seek support from your clinical area as required. The policy and further information on Clinical Skills Net can be found on the intranet.